A few weeks ago, a client of mine came to me and said, it's time to start investing in these Chinese stocks. He was going on about how cheap they are, what an amazing opportunity this is, how they've sold so much for most of 2021 and how we can get them at these amazing levels relative to what they used to trade just a few months ago. And I looked at him and I said two things. I said, listen, have you been following what the Chinese government has been doing to their own companies, cracking down on them sector by sector over the summer 2021? And the second thing is, do you even know how these companies, how these Chinese companies are listed on the US stock market and what kind of structure they use to do that? Because if you don't pay attention here, you can lose every single dollar you put in these companies. All right, let's talk about it. All right, so let's look at some of these Chinese ultra cheap stocks and kind of try to understand whether this makes sense to start investing in them here. So let me just show you this chart here that kind of gives you the performance of the five well-known Chinese names listed on the US stock market. So you have Alibaba, Tencent, Bilibili, Didi and Pinduoduo. So these are somewhat household names even in the United States, right, of Chinese tech companies. And this is a chart that shows the performance uh, of their stock prices on the US stock market over the last two or three months. So this is since the beginning of the summer. When you look at the performance here, they lost somewhere between 30, 40, 50 percent, which is insane. And naturally, it begs the question is, well, is this a good time to start investing in them? And you had a lot of people kind of on the CNBC, on Bloomberg, talking throughout the summer how they are sticking to those companies, how they're maintaining their positions uh, in, in these stocks. And uh, little by little, by the end of August, most of them stopped out, right? So the question is, well, where is this going to stop? And is there a good point uh, to enter? And so to try to understand what's really happening in China, you have to kind of let's spend two minutes on this. Uh, go back to early July. In early July, the Chinese securities regulator put together a team that would review all the Chinese IPOs abroad, mostly on the United States uh, stock market and um, give recommendations, right? So one of the early decisions was really to start cracking down on some of these sectors. And the first sector that was kind of the victim here was the education sector, uh, where it's well known that in China, parents typically spend a lot of money on after-school education, sometimes thirty, forty thousand um, dollars $40,000 a year per child, because they're obviously trying to push them to, into the best universities in China, and this is a highly competitive market. And um, the education industry is, is big in China. This is something of a, to the degree of $100 billion a year in terms of revenues. And overnight, the Chinese government basically said, well, none of this is okay. Uh, those education companies should be nonprofit. And they effectively nationalized the education industry. And so when you look at this chart here, you see that they lost 90% of their value basically overnight. And at the same time, the Chinese regulators said that none of these education companies will be able to list in the US using the VIE structure which is the variable interest entity. Now, what is the VIE structure? The VIE structure simply is a shell company that Chinese companies have to set up somewhere in the Cayman Islands or somewhere in the Caribbean or uh, somewhere offshore that allows them to list on the US stock market. So every single Chinese company that you are buying on the US stock market, like Alibaba or Tencent, is a, a VIE structure. It's a, it's a company that is set up in the Cayman Islands that issues shares that basically promises to give you the economic benefit, the cash flow stream, if you like, of the Chinese operations. And this structure has really is actually forbidden in China, right? Uh, it's, it's outlawed, it's illegal uh, for foreigners to own Chinese companies. So Chinese companies use these VIE structures to go around the law. And for many years, uh, this has been in place since the 1990s, this has been tolerated by the Chinese regulators. But obviously, it's no longer tolerated for some industries. And that really spooked off all the other companies and all the other industries because the market's clearly afraid that these structures will become void. So now there's really two questions that we have to answer here. First of all, are these companies now at levels where it's absolutely compelling for you to start investing? Because these companies are still doing business in China. They are still generating a ton of money. And are they at levels now that they've sold off by 30, 40, 50 percent where it's, you know, it's, it's a bargain? Is this, is this an opportunity that comes around every few years only where you're able to invest in these companies at these depressed valuations? So that's, the, that's question number one, right, which is super hard to answer. The question number two is what is the reaction of the Chinese going to be? Are you effectively betting that the Chinese regulators will not completely um, outlaw and forbid these VIE structures, that they will somehow keep tolerating them? Because you have to understand that when you invest in one of these companies, you're effectively buying four types of risk, right? You, the first type of risk you're buying is that as a foreign investor, 
it's illegal for you to own a piece of equity of a Chinese company. So effectively, you're buying a piece of a, of a company in the Cayman Islands, this VIE structure, this variable interest entity structure. But that's not a piece of equity in a Chinese company. The second type of risk is that as a foreign investor, you really don't have any influence on the management because since you don't own a piece of equity in this, uh, in this company, there is no mechanism for you to enforce any change in management or strategy of the company. So, so you'll have no influence at all. The third type of risk is that in the event of a dispute, Chinese courts will likely not help you because remember, this is illegal. This, is, uh, this structure is not allowed in China. So if you want to uh, take the company to court as a, as a shareholder, there's really nothing you can do here. And the fourth type of risk is that you're effectively risking that Beijing one day will not wake up and say, you know what? Western investors or foreign investors, thank you for all the money that helped us develop uh, all these businesses, all these internet companies, media, telecom, uh, all the tech giants uh, in China. Thank you for the capital, but we're not going to pay you anything. And at that point, you would effectively see these share prices go down to zero or close to zero, just like we are seeing this with the education industry. So this is effectively what you're buying. So personally, I started looking at these stocks, these Chinese stocks, and I am kind of split on the debate. You know, is this a good time? Should we consider investing in them or not? And I think the right way to look at this is to simply consider your investment. If you decide to buy into Alibaba, Tencent, Didi, or some of the other Chinese companies listed in the US, you're effectively buying an option. You're buying, you're spending an option premium, which is the price of the share, and you are risking the whole amount, right? Because if China goes completely uh, bunkers, then all these share prices will go to zero. So this is what you're risking for a relatively significant upside, right? These companies are still real businesses. They will keep doing business in China. The Chinese government likely just wants to exert more control all over the management, over these tech billionaires, but also over the strategy and, and the behavior of these companies towards Chinese consumers, because they want to have a middle class that uh, behaves a certain way, right? They're trying to do this whole social engineering in China. So these businesses will still be here. So now the real question is, you know, is China prepared to kind of risk a real conflict with the US investors base, with the Biden administration? Because if they completely uh, destroy this mechanism of VIE structures and all the investors uh, that invested in uh, these companies overseas uh, on the US stock market and elsewhere lose all of their investments, this would obviously create a conflict between China and uh, the US administration, the, the government, the Biden administration, right? This, this would be a suddenly a, a monster geopolitical issue. So a lot of people that are investing in these stocks are now betting on the fact that somehow China will regulate the, the online gaming, uh, the gambling, the education industry, which is important uh, for their social reasons. They will somehow find a way to make these structures legitimate. And so all of these companies that are listed on the US stock market, the Alibabas, the Tencents, the Didis, Pinduoduo, JD.com, all of these companies will ultimately rebound. And this is the thesis for a lot of people that are putting money in these companies. All right, so much for a quick deep dive into Chinese stocks, the way they are listed in the US stock market, whether you should be investing in them, kind of trying to understand the issues around all of these structures and why they have sold so much over the last three or four months through the summer 2021. It's so like I always say with every single investment, be careful, do your due diligence, uh, make sure that if you're going to invest in these stocks, don't put all of your capital in there. Layer yourself in, uh, buy, buy them in stages. And remember, there is significant upside, but you can obviously lose all of your money if the Chinese government goes completely bunkers, like I said, and outlaws uh, these VIE structures. Anyway, thanks for hanging out today. Make sure you give a like to this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and I'll see you in the future video.